I'm your host, Roy. Of course, we are the uh, podcast that brings you a, a wide variety of guests that can talk about a lot of diverse topics. And today is no exception. Uh, we are excited to have Ann Holm back with us. She has uh, been a previous guest, but seemed like we uh, had to wrap it up right in the middle of a great conversation. So uh, she's been gracious enough to come back. She's been in the people development business since 1984. She is currently a professional certified coach specializing in executive and organizational development coaching. She is certified master practitioner of the Myers-Briggs type indicator and a world expert on how to use type uh, how to use type effectively for personal and team development. She's also a skilled mental fitness coach just like physical fitness you can deliberately build focus and resilience to help you reach your goals. The stronger your mental muscle, the more likely you are to hold on to your gains over time. She uses the positive intelligence, which is an up and coming framework to achieve mental resilience. Uh, prior to coaching, she had 25 years of experience in applied brain science, and she also used this hands-on experience to help her clients understand how to stay focused, engaged, and energized given the demands of the 21st century workplace. And thanks a lot, and welcome back to the show. Yeah, hey, glad to be here. Yeah, so I'm excited. Uh, and actually, in the centro, the uh, positive intelligence, that is one thing that, you know, we really want to uh, touch on. I'll let you, uh, you know, I kind of give a little introduction about how you found yourself mm -hmm. here. But then, uh, you know, we're going to kind of frame this positive intelligence about the impending uh, move from workers being home based to maybe having to go back to the office, even for a limited amount of time and the anxiety and everything that's wrapped around that. So anyway, uh, tell us a little bit yeah. about, you know, how you found yourself here. This is such an interesting uh, uh, I guess, uh, skill set and uh, play, uh, you know, yeah. area to focus on. Yeah, it you know it is. It's 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 a very interesting study and it's also one that I think is so critical given the times that we're in right now. Yeah. It's always important to uh know when we're getting in our own way and that's uh effectively what uh lack of positive intelligence is is yes. we get it we get in our own way. We keep uh, trying to do uh, use strategies to manage our world that simply um, aren't working. And yeah. we all have those. So this positive intelligence that I want to talk about today is based on the work of Shirzad Hameen. Um, and it is a best-selling uh, book of, that uh, Shirzad published in 2013. And it has now evolved into a very uh, useful uh, coaching uh, program. And I'm a certified practitioner of that program. But what I love about this is that it teaches uh, mental flexibility, mental resilience, yeah. especially in the uh, context of what we're going through right now, which is this ambiguous state of, yeah. are we going to work? Are we not going to work? What's it going to look like, et cetera? What are the risks? Et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it's yeah. a long list of ambiguities and it's putting people uh, into a position where they're um, uh, trying defensive sort of strategies that might actually be, hard, you know, getting themselves uh, less of, than what they really need or want. Yeah. Yeah, I know it feels like we've just gotten, you know, kind of settled into this routine <laughs> and now it's like time, time yeah. to change again. And, I, you know, realistically, the only constant in this world is change and so I do realize that yep. but uh, you know a lot of people have been at home they've been kind of left to their own devices managing themselves or their workflow right. not close to other people and so now we're going to try and maybe some of these behaviors have been amplified during this period but now we're going to try to maybe bring everybody back so it's not only the anxiety of what's my new routine going to look like but also you know, kind of the interaction and what are the risks, like you said, of actually going back to an office? Yes, yes, that's exactly it. And so um, I'll, get, I'll give a, a, a brief description of what the positive intelligence framework okay. is. Um, and then I will talk about how it sort of applies to uh, what, we're, uh, what we're talking about here, what this return yeah. to work thing. So... Uh, basically, we have a tendency, everybody has a tendency to either judge ourselves, 
judge our circumstances or judge other other individuals. So we we spend a lot of time uh, judging, and uh, we fall into this particularly when we are in s- situations where we feel you know, we have negative emotion. We either feel unsafe, we feel unsure, etc. So we start start doing that. We start saying. You, you know, poor me, I'm in this particular situation or I, 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 I'm, I'm not going to be safe or, or something like that. Uh, we might judge others. You know, I wish that guy would just stop talking about it and just get back to work because um, <laughs> yeah. we have those guys as well. Yeah. We judge circumstances. Oh, my gosh. You know, is it ever going to feel normal again? So we get ourselves into these mindsets where we're constantly, you know, judging. And then on top of that, we have these uh, characters that Shirzad talks about that are called the saboteurs. So there's certain ways in which we try to cope with these situations and it actually is counterproductive. We don't think it's counterproductive, yeah. but it actually is. So I'll give an example of what one of these characters might look like. So one of the uh, saboteurs that uh, Shirzad talks about is an avoider. So an avoider is an individual who is very uncomfortable around unpleasantness. So uh, they, you know, they might be the kind of person, if we put it in the context of the pandemic, might be the kind of person who would say, this is way overblown. People just need to get over it. You know, just stop talking about it. No, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear what the CDC has to say. It's, it's this, it's this strategy that is being used to try to not have your equilibrium disturbed too much. Interesting. All right. Okay. Then I happen to be an avoider myself. So, uh, you know, I, uh, the, the, the funny thing about being an avoider is that you think to yourself, well, what's wrong with wanting to keep things pleasant, right? What's right. wrong with trying to make sure just, you, you know, just, it, it feels like it's actually a good thing to be that person. Right. But actually what it does is, is you're actually potentially avoiding very important information or you're dismissing people who might have legitimate concerns. That's a tendency of an avoider. Okay. okay. So now that person's coming back to work and somebody might have a legitimate concern about, well, you know, what are our protocols? And that individual might say, an avoider might say, well, you know, you'll find out when you get here. We'll be fine, right? Uh, Now, another person's strategy might be around trying to get at every single specific rule. Those people are known as sticklers. (laughs) So they want to know, they they might want to know all the protocols. They might become very upset if somebody walks past the hand sanitizer and doesn't use it, sees a mask drop down below the nose, something like that. They they can become very, very, very agitated. So now imagine a stickler and an avoider have come back to work. Oh my gosh. So the the anxieties are still high. The ambiguity is still high. And now you've got these two characters that are trying to share share office space. Yeah. You know, the one guy going, you know, just just cool it, yeah. and the other guy is going, I'll cool it when you use the hand sanitizer. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. Now, are these <laughs> you know. stick? I, I was just something popped into my head about the stickler. I, I don't know if I'm going to ask you if this is part of their trait, though. Is uh, it's the guy that's like, okay, uh, you know, here's this protocol that we have maybe it's just using a hand sanitizer but then yeah. it's like well okay but what if if the sun came up in the west tomorrow you know do you know or if the moon turned green you know it, it, it's these people that they come up with every imaginable scenario to you're like oh my gosh let's just start in with what we're doing and then you know we'll cross these other bridges if they ever materialize okay and that's interesting because you actually, it's not a stickler, but you brought up another variety of saboteur, which is the hypervigilant. Okay. So those are the guys who say, okay, you know, everybody here at work has gotten vaccinated, right? We're all back. We've all had the vaccinations. And that person says, well, what about the B1X variant? <laughs> how, how have we accounted for that? Yeah. Right? And, and so you you're looking at this this level of constant 
uh, hypervigilance about the what if the you know what if the moon is green and the sun yeah. comes up in the west that whole kind of a thing yeah. you know they want everything is about getting the uh, the sureness of of there being no possibility of something going wrong. The problem is, is that that's no, that's not reality for anybody. Right. You know, if that if we were looking to prevent all possible disasters, we wouldn't get in a car. We wouldn't, you know, we'd be care. We'd have all our food pureed because what if we <laughs> choked on a, right. a on a whatever, you know. Uh, so, but that's another version of coping with that stress. Okay. Is this this hypervigilance. So, okay. um, we've talked about three of them: the avoider, who you know, uh, tries to avoid. Anything that's going to disrupt their flow, we've talked about the sti- the, uh, the the stickler, the person who is really tight about protocols. We've talked about now the hypervigilant, the person who's you know worried about whether or not some sort of further curveball is going to dis- is going to put everybody at risk. Right. So those are three, and there's six others. Okay. I'll just tell you who, who they are, just okay. so we have a full list. Yep. Uh, so we have the controller. This is the individual who tries to control themselves, control everybody, control the system. Uh, they're different than the stickler, because the stickler is looking at are you following the protocol and the rules? The controller is trying to move the chess pieces. Okay. So they're the ones that are trying to seize control of everything and are very, very anxious if they don't have it. So they feel like if I don't control the situation, the situation's going to control me. That's yeah. their mindset. And they don't realize the dark side to that thinking. Yeah. All right. So that's another one controller. Uh, the hyperachiever, these might be the individuals who are um, out to to prove that they can work, you know, (laughs) harder, faster and accomplish (laughs) more than anybody else. And so they don't they leave it a little bit of a debris path. You know, they're the ones that are, you know, shooting off emails at 1 a.m. and making everybody else feel guilty about not, you know, uh, engaging with that. So so you've got that. You have the um, I mentioned the hypervigilance. Um, we have the restless person and these are the guys that have a hard time just staying in one spot. So they might be the guys that say, you know, I don't want to come back into the office. My plan was go to, was to go to Bora Bora to, uh, you know, office out of Bora Bora for the next several months. And then I was going to go to Croatia and then I was going to, and so trying to get them to say, okay, no, actually, you know, you might be coming into the office, uh, a few days a week here. They might you know, you might start to see this restlessness and then imagine, by the way, the restless person engages with the controller who says, oh, no, you're not. <laughs> you know, you're coming in. Right. And so you get, you know, you get the, these kinds of, of uh, behaviors. So like, how many have I listed so far? Six? That of them, is six. Or? Yes. Yeah. OK, six. So the ones, what else have I? Um, the hyperachiever, the uh, the hyper, the controller, the avoider, the pleaser, uh, an individual who you know, is going out of their way to make sure everybody's happy at every moment. Yeah. So they're bending over backwards and they're exhausting themselves trying to make sure everybody, you know, is, is, is happy. And their, their, uh, their, uh, their way of controlling that situation, that anxious situation is by trying to, um, serve to the point that they wear themselves out right right so uh so that's uh another uh, in, uh individual so now i've got seven of those right yes yes yeah okay the victim the victim is another one though the victim is the one who is just this is awful that's awful the situation's never going to be the same right. you know we might come into the office but it's going to be terrible and you know i i so, so this this idea of every there's no control here. We're just we're just victims. We're just going to be, you know, that's the way it's going to be. Right. So that's that's another character. So now again, you imagine these guys interacting with each other. You've yeah. got, you know, the stickler, 
who comes and says, oh, you forgot the hand sanitizer. And the victim says, oh, I never get anything right. (laughs) (laughs) Right, 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 right. So, you know, you get you get that going. Now, who am I forgetting in this lineup of characters? I've got the pleaser. I've got the victim. I've got the hyperachiever. I've got the hypervigilant. I've got the uh, what else have I mentioned already? The avoider. The avoider. And the the restless. The restless. Now, why? There's (laughs) just one that I just. It's not coming to mind. It, uh, I usually can rattle these off. Just a second. Oh, I'll just a, tell you what they are. That's okay. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I have to look it up. No, but um, that's fine. Uh, let's see. So these are, again, these are just guys uh, that are um, getting in the way of us using our best thinking. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Which one? Oh, the hyper rational. Oh, yes, of course. So the hyper rational is the guy who is uh, says, follow the science. All you have to do is follow the science. And they don't think about some of the emotional underpinnings of what might be uh, creating uh, difficulties for other people. Right. So they might say. You know, you just follow the science. Well, science actually changes. And if we only follow the science, we actually have been getting lots of mixed messages from yeah, science. Yeah. All you got to do is mask. Nope. No mask. Nope. Science says no mask. No science says one mask. No science says two masks, yeah. et cetera. So if you take that hyper rational stance of, oh, whatever, you know, what we'll just follow the science. That's no guarantee either. But right. that's the strategy <laughs> these individuals use. So imagine follow the science is interacting with the victim or follow the science is interacting with the avoider. You can get these, these mixtures of personalities uh, that are uh, using their, you're using maladaptive strategies, saboteurs to try to create um, some sort of order in their own thinking. Yeah. So So, are the, are we, do we have an underlying predisposition to one of these, but maybe, we switch between them in different situations or do we typically, if we're, you know, let's just say if we're the pleaser, we're the pleaser pretty yep. much constantly. Um, I have, that's an excellent question. We all have all of these inside of ourselves to a certain degree. And the situation will certainly uh, dictate what you might see. However, we also have usually two or so, two or three that repeat themselves more often, okay? okay? And on top of that, now one of my colleagues and I actually did some research on whether uh, somebody's personality type by way of the MBTI could actually predict what those saboteurs might look like. And uh, for some personality types, they're pretty easy to predict. So for somebody who, for instance, is an INTP, uh, those individuals, tend to you know lean towards hyper rational uh, but for some types you can't predict uh, but we usually have t- one, uh, two or three of them that show up a lot mine is restless avoider so yeah. you know i'm the kind of person who says oh you know it's gonna be fine and and i'm going to bora bora <laughs> yeah. you know <laughs> yeah. so but it's annoying for it seems like well what's wrong with that you're taking care of yourself you really it, it, the, the dark side is is that you are leaving a debris path behind you and you'll still feel that restlessness no matter where you are. Yeah. So th- I guess that brings up kind of this uh, situation. I wonder if employers have taken this into account because uh, there's always the personality conflicts just when there's work. Right. And now we've kind of bring this extra element of people of things to worry about or to be hyper vigilant. It's not just, yep. Oh, you misspelled this word or that, you know, that Excel box should be, you know, now we've thrown this and people, uh, I don't know, from what I've seen, people tend to be very emotional and be very, uh, uh, whatever side they're leaning to. They're very, uh, stringent on that as you know, like there's, not too many people who are in the middle and trying to see the middle ground. So right. I guess, I guess the question wrapped up in all that was, you know, have empl- as we see um, openings and things like that, do you think that employers have really taken that into account? Uh, very likely not because the, uh, the saboteurs often show up 
as sort of the dark side of being a particular, having a particular strength. So for instance, if you are uh, somebody who is able to get things sort of lined up and working as a good unit, um, they, uh, they're often uh, lauded for those other behaviors. And the, depending on pecking order, for instance, the, the hyper-controlling boss doesn't, it's not a dark, it doesn't, he doesn't think it's a dark side. This is how I keep this place running, yeah. right? Yeah. And they don't, they don't realize, they don't realize even in themselves that that's actually creates a real uh, downdraft yeah. when you when you bring those characters into the room because now you get somebody who, for instance, again, let's say an avoider, so he notices something has gone wrong and he should go tell his boss, yeah. the controller, what's going on. Well, if he feels like he's going to go in there and just get nailed or he gets his own personal freedom restricted. Like if he says, for instance, I noticed on this spreadsheet, I made a mistake. And if he's going to go in and see the controller boss, the controller boss might say, well, that's it. Everything you do from here on out, you have to show me first. Right. So he might avoid go even going in there because he might meet that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, if, this is the kind of dynamics we see in a normal situation. You add the pandemic and you add the return to work, and now you have the possibility of really seeing a lot of these characters. Yeah. So you might that might beg the question then. Okay, great. What do we do about this? Right. Right. <laughs> right. Yes. Um, so th the nice thing about the positive intelligence program is two things. It creates self awareness around our own saboteurs and what the, the impact of those things really are. And then there's also uh, a way of uh, teaching yourself um, how to have better self-command of your thinking. So there's, a, there's actually an eight-week program uh, hmm. that can be done. And, and I, I take clients through the eight-week boot camp, and then they learn how to settle their physiology down and recognize that the saboteur is in the room, and then they make other types of choices. The term is using your sage powers. That's the term that Shirzad uses. But it's this idea of, you know, finding some empathy in the situation, taking a step back, seeing what's really going on, taking a non judgmental approach to innovating for ideas, deciding you know, what's in alignment with either your values or the values of the company and then deciding on action. So instead of battling these saboteurs, like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to show him this spreadsheet because then he's going to tell me I have to talk to him every time I do a spreadsheet. You can, you can check those guys at the door and you can come together and say, okay, what went wrong here? I can understand why that went wrong you know, what do you think is going to be a good way to go about fixing this? And so you can start to co-create a solution right. that's using uh, a, a more positive trajectory than to start to battle the saboteurs. Because when the saboteurs are in the room, you just get more of the negative stuff and you get farther and farther apart. And so when you see the, the toxic office, a lot of times it's the saboteurs that are doing battle there. Yeah. Um, so. I, and I was just going to say, I guess there has to be some respect about uh, no matter our position is that you feel a certain way based on your beliefs and how you interpret data. I right. feel the way I do, but uh, the, you know, I, I look at this as politics and religion as well. The effort and the turmoil for me to try to come out and convince you that, you're, you're wrong. I'm right. right. You need to think like I do get on board with this. I mean, it, and I know it's hard because we want everybody to kind of, we think our thinking is the norm and how can yes. anybody else think differently? But in reality, yep. we have to embrace that and say, you know what, you feel the way you do because of this and then try to 
somehow, uh, you know, I, I know we can't go so far that it becomes detrimental, but at some way we have to kind of adjust to be able to let people have those feelings. Yeah, it's so it's so essential. And honestly, when uh, when people so so when they do the positive intelligence program, they really are practicing uh, 15 minutes a day uh, mindfulness. And, and I we hear mindfulness a lot and we think, oh, gosh, we throw mindfulness on this and throw mindfulness <laughs> on that. It's it, it's 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 really about slowing down and thinking about what needs to be done right. in this moment rather than thinking of all the things that went wrong in the past and all the things that could go wrong in the future right. to the point where we're so distracted by that. So imagine, you know, for instance, a hypervigilant person coming back to work and their, their only place their mind can go is what happens if the B12X right. variant shows up here and, you know, and, and now we're in this particular situation and they can't, they can't bring themselves to, okay, this is what I need to do here. Uh, what are the protocols that I could follow so that I know I'm safe and, you know, and, and co-create even as a team, all right? right? You know, what are we going to do as a team? What are we going to follow through on as a team so that everybody feels like they can do their work and not get sidetracked? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's a big challenge. It's a huge challenge. Really? Yeah. And I heard an old saying years ago that, uh, you know, pe people would just uh, try to challenge you on saying, well, that's just your perception. But I think the strong point is that our perception is our reality. That is correct. That is correct. And <laughs> so, when you battle it and you don't try to, you know, meet uh, with some sort of uh, common thinking or yeah. you, uh, you or you don't realize that your own perspective is up for some degree of discussion, right. uh, you really can get, you know, more of these battles. So it's really, really helpful if, if uh, an office can, uh, you know, at least if each under individual can understand what their likely saboteur looks like. Yeah. Um, and, um, and go from there. So, and we can, I think to, uh, I'm ask your opinion on this is that we need to ask the questions why to understand, not to, uh, set up a point to have a battle on because so many times it'll be like, well, I know that you feel this way. So can you tell me, uh, why you feel, you know, I'm just trying to understand right. better why you feel that way. And then the first yep. thing out of your mouth, you're like, oh, well, that's so wrong. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah. well, I, what's I think the that, point yeah, of that yeah, conversation? Yeah, right. That, that exercise right. went well, totally wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's actually one of the, um, real benefits to being, having an entire s staff or at least the leadership, you know, if, if they even just go to positiveintelligence.com, they can actually take that assessment for free yeah. and find out what their flavor of, of saboteur looks like. You know, that's the opening uh, uh, way to, to get at it. Um, and then from there, if they think, okay, well, you know, we want to, we want to improve that dynamic, um, then, you know, uh, I can work with them or, or another uh, person who knows this system can work for them. Yeah. But right off the bat, if you just go there and you just get a feel for it. So yeah. if you say, okay, here I am. Oh, look at that. I'm an, you know, I'm a, I'm an avoider. You can at least start to see that's the first layer of self-awareness around the way yeah. we get into our, uh, get in our own way and how others uh, we might bring out other sorts of saboteur behavior in other people as well, wow. you know? Yeah. That's the other question is, so do, um, do just take an avoider, for instance, do they have more conflict with maybe the controller or versus, uh, I'm just trying to look let versus, uh, you know, somebody else on the spectrum that maybe they don't have, or as they're just potential for everybody to have conflict. I think I think it just you, you you'll see um, you'll see various types of conflict unfold. So um, in the past, I have done some workshops for people using the saboteur thing, and I do this thing called saboteur theater, where I have uh, two volunteers come up and they pick out of a hat whatever those saboteurs are. So let's say you're going to have a victim and a controller, right? Yeah. And then I give them a, 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 a a scenario like they're sharing a hotel room 
and then there's then they're going to do like a little skit on what it would look like if a victim and a controller hmm. were sharing a hotel room. So, you know, uh, the one individual might do something like they swipe their key card. It doesn't work. Oh, that never works for me. <laughs> and the controller elbows his way in and says, let me do it. And, you know, on and on it goes. Uh-huh. So you'll get that flavor, but you might get, let's say you get an avoider and a stickler and they're trying to uh, balance a checkbook, Right. Uh, you, you know, it's it, it, you'll just see a different flavor of conflict come out, you know, especially if people's mindset is falling into that negative. Uh, it can be fear. It can be a uh, lack of certainty. There's there's lots of different things that, you know, it can be irritability. There could be any kind of these negative emotions are the first sign you're going to bring the saboteur yeah. to the table. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I feel like I'm that way to a point. It's that uh, the amb- the not knowing if, if I know yes, if I know no, I can plan yep. appropriately and take the corrective action. It's that it's just that place of limbo sometimes. But then, then we could kind of talk a little bit about the, you know, um, borrowing trouble. You know, we talk about that with worrying because you can worry, worry, yeah. worry about a situation. And I'm, I'm going to, I'll throw myself under the bus. We had one here the other day that, you know, I was thinking a lot about it, kept me up one night. And then guess what? It didn't even materialize. And I look back and think, <laughs> what, a, what a waste of effort and time to even have given it a second thought. And it's, I'm going to tell you, it's hard, but that's something I try to do is like, okay, is this a reality yet? If it's not, then, you know, we, we, of course we don't want, there may not be any traffic on the interstate, but we still don't want to, you know, sit in a chair out in the middle of that. We have to use some common sense, (laughs) but you know, on the, but really is like, if, if we can't do anything about it, is it really worth giving it a lot of extra thought, you know, for some things? Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, what I really love about this positive intelligence system is that there's a lot of strategies that uh, you can teach yourself to um, uh, start to understand and pick some, do something else other than you know <laughs> worry or or uh, or whatever. So I, I love the idea of you don't put your chair on the interstate even when there's. <laughs> slow traffic it's really good but you do you know but you do see people really they can stay up all night worrying about something and um and so maybe one of those techniques might be well what's the absolute worst case scenario and can you deal with that worst case scenario or what would be your strategy um that kind of a thing as long as you're not playing it out as reality yeah you know what i mean right uh so and that's and though that that takes a little bit of mental discipline and self-awareness to know you're even there to even know that you're ruminating for instance if you lay awake at night and you're ruminating you may not even think you're ruminating you're just thinking about it yeah no you're ruminating (laughs) so well and and sometimes we can uh you know make it come true because i guess the side effect of being up is then now you haven't slept and now you're cranky so even yep. if that thing happens not to the extent you thought, your reaction is probably going to be way overblown yes. and out because you're just tired. You're tired and you've been thinking about this and how I'm going to react and I'm not going to let that happen. And we're so yep. ready to pounce. So anyway, yep. just yep. bad Absolutely. situation. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ann, thanks so much for taking time out of your day. It's always uh, uh, delightful to chat with you. It's always insightful. We always learn a lot of good stuff. So uh, before we get some other information, um, what is a tool that you use in your daily life, tool or habit, something that really helps you? Um, I actually uh, do a a positive intelligence gym session every day, which means I just, you know, I learn to, to... slow my mind down enough or slow my thinking that's actually it's not the right word i wouldn't use the word slow i learn to know that i can focus and command my mind and i know when i'm falling off the rails or at yeah. most of the time right exactly. <laughs> but i have to practice exactly. it yeah. so i do that that's one of my daily habits is to practice that mindfulness because it's, it's actually very useful okay awesome well uh, we will post the link in um, okay. in the show notes for the positive intelligence, but just tell us, you know, how can they reach out and uh, mm-hmm. 
do that. And then of course, who, you know, what, what kind of clients do you work with? How can you help them? And uh -huh. of course, where they can reach out and uh, get a hold of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can be reached at my uh, website is anholm.net. Um, and I can be emailed at anholm at anholm.net. And, um, you, there's actually a link to book a consultation. I, I offer free consultations. Okay. So if somebody, for instance, goes to Positive Intelligence and they do their, um, they do their uh, Positive Intelligence assessment, uh, that's free also. Um, they, I, I'm happy to go over the results with them and just get them started thinking about what that, those results could mean and what yeah. it might look like in the work that they're doing. So I, I, try to, I try to take whatever they're learning about themselves and set it into the, into the current situation that they find themselves. Okay. Um, so um, I, I'll, I'll do that. Um, so it's, yeah, it's an important time for this. And I think we can put this on both the employers and the employee as an employer, yep. you need to really be aware and be prepared for what to expect if you're bringing people back in in the next few months. But then also as the employee, you need to recognize who you are and where you are, where you're at. So we have yep. the, I guess, a beneficial interaction with others or, uh, you know, we absolutely. Absolutely. All right. I, I agree with you. And I think that's the big challenge really as we go back Yeah. is, you know, how, how are we going to manage this very ambiguous situation so that everybody can bring their best and most flexible self back to work yeah. with, you know, and, and not, you know, derail on, onto the saboteur. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it's something I really challenge employers to think about because until, you know, we talk pre-show, I really haven't even thought of this scenario. I mean, you just, uh, you, you, I just didn't. And so it is going to be a thing and we probably need to get yep. out in front of it. So we know how to handle it in a positive manner for everybody. That's correct. Yeah. All right, Ann. Well, thanks so much. That's going to do it for another episode of the Business of Business podcast. I'm your host, Roy. Of course, you can find us at www.thebusinessofbusinesspodcast.com. We're on all the major social media platforms as well as all the uh, major podcast platforms, iTunes, Stitcher, Google, Spotify. If we're not on one that you uh, use regularly, if you'll let me know, I'll be sure and get us added. So until next time, take care of yourself and take care of your business.